gamers today we're gonna do something that has not been done before what i'm gonna be doing today is i'm gonna be doing a kind of like a list of favorable and unfavorable matchups for each civilization so let's get started the way it's gonna work is i put a sieve on the top so we're talking about this sieve and its uh matchups so great means French is favored. This doesn't mean it's 100% gonna win. This doesn't mean you're getting free wins. It just means that it's a good matchup for French. Let me actually change that. Good matchup. I like that. Bad matchup. That doesn't mean it's like a 60, 70% either way. It just means like, you know, you've got something going on there. The first and probably the biggest in my opinion, bad matchup for French is Malians. The reason for that is uh, it's very hard to put pressure on Malians because they have the defensive landmark. And then Donzos and Javelin Throwers are a pretty good combo against French. So, good luck. I'm still not sure what the best way to play against Malians as French is, but I think you just gotta put a lot of pressure early on and uh, pray from then on out. You gotta basically force them off of gold and try to overwhelm them. Another bad matchup for French is Chinese. You'll, you'll notice a pattern. Any Civ that's really great defensive is not very good for French because they can defend easy and then you know French is a Civ that you gotta build up your, your lead and your aggro in order to kind of win eventually. So any Civ that does a great job defending early on, not great. Now this is a, an interesting one because I think that French is not great against English uh, late game. It shouldn't be great against English in general if you follow this pattern. But I actually think that English versus French is quite an even matchup. Um, I think in Feudal they're both very strong. French can usually get a faster uh, or more worker production with a second TC. And then also French has a massive timing in Castle where English slows down a bit. And if English decides to go for like men at arms, which is probably their strongest unit in Castle by far, the French crossbows absolutely mow them down together with the knights. So you kind of have to stay in this weird comp with English where it's like spearmen, longbow in Castle. And longbows actually don't do that much damage to uh, our, our Rectorators because they can activate their, um, what are they called? I can't remember. They're shields and they get bonus armor. So I think that matchup, and obviously in Imperial it's very favorable for, for English, but I think in general, uh, Pavise, yeah. I think in, in general, uh, both civs can, uh, can win. Next matchup we will be talking about is um, HRE. So this has been a matchup that was very, very favored for French. But recently, uh, people discovered how to play H a little bit better. So it's not like 65% winner anymore like it used to be. But I think in general, everything the French has is the way you're supposed to play against HRE. Uh, you can pick off their prelates getting relics. You can pick off villagers at gold. You force them to play defensively. And they're kind of like a perfect sieve for French to bully because they're very passive. They got no tricks against French, so they just got to defend. And if the game gets to castle, and you have your Abrilertretis, uh, you can basically kill their men at arms or knights pretty easily. And then they might be forced to, you know, go like range themselves, which is kind of weird for them. The next sieve that we will be talking about is Abacid. Uh, Abacid is a matchup where French has very short timing in early fuel to do damage and if they don't do damage early on the game can snowball in a really bad way for french where the abbasid will just have so many units it will be able to completely overwhelm french even with terrible engagements will just have way more units um so yeah try to do damage i mean any cv play against this friend try to do early damage but against abbasid i feel like it's a little bit um Maybe harder to do that, not sure. The next matchup we'll be talking about is Mongol. This used to be a matchup that was very, very favorable for Mongol uh, for a long time because of tower rushes. Then people kind of learn how to defend tower rushes. 
And now, Mongol is back in favor, but people figure out how to deal with them. You know, you can make scouts to destroy the towers, you don't need to go like Rams or anything like that. So I think in general this is a matchup that either side can win, so I don't think it favors uh, one or the other. The next matchup we will be discussing is... Uh, so I'm gonna... Okay, so I'm gonna put this here, but I'm gonna elaborate a little bit. I think that if... I'm gonna put it in neutral because I think there's a big timing for French to do damage. So, French is favored in Imperial. Obviously, it's Delhi. You know, it sucks. French is, in my opinion, favored in Castle. Because they just have better units and Delhi kind of feels wonky to play. In Feudal, if the Delhi goes Tower of Victory and takes no damage, French has a very hard time to deal with it. But a French that's aggressive against Delhi can snowball extremely, extremely quickly. Like, the game can go sideways if you're a Delhi player super, super quick. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of leaning towards putting a bad matchup for French. But I am not actually sure. We're gonna we're gonna put it here. Actually, I'm gonna put Abbasid here, um, and I'm gonna put Delhi like this. I think yeah, I think this is more appropriate. Uh, favorable against is uh, French versus Rus. I always call Rus the worst French or the budget French because they're kind of like the same Civ. They both have knights. I just feel that whatever Rus can do in feudal and castle, French can do better. Uh, the only thing that Arus is better with is producing mass archers, which doesn't help against French at all. Because of extra wood income. And getting relics faster, which is great, but again, against French, not the greatest thing because they can just kill your monks. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I would say Delhi is a good matchup against French. You just have to survive, like, super early on. And then the last one... Uh, we will be discussing is Ottoman. So I always I actually thought that this is a pretty bad matchup for French. I think it's um, it's very tempo based. It's kind of like Abbasid in a lot of ways, where um, it all depends how the game starts, how the rest of the game is gonna go. If that makes sense. Um, Ottoman is very tempo based because they have free units. So Ottoman is tempo based in general against every Civ because they get free units. So the longer the game goes, they're going to get more and more value if your guys are just trading. So you need to make sure to get the raids in on their wood line specifically in Feudal to um, to deny them from just producing like a crap load of archers and snowball the game from then on out. All right, the next one we're going to be talking about is HRE. Um, again, the worst matchup is Malians. Uh, the reason for this is HRE in general relies heavily on melee units and Malian with the Musafari Warriors counters all of that. And if you ever go for land shits, so Musafari Warriors counter a lot of what HRE can do. You can go land shits or ranged units, but then you can just go javelin throwers and snipe those. They're both civs that want to rush castle. The problem is when both get to castle, I think Mali and his favor quite a bit. And this is probably the matchup I struggled the most as a HRE player. It was really, really rough to push out on the map and be on the map. You just feel like you're stuck in your own base and you're just taking bad engagements. Uh, the next matchup we will be talking about is Chinese. Now, this is a, an interesting one. A lot of people think that HRE counters Chinese. I don't think so. I think that either side can win, like, and I'm not talking Barbican and Rush or whatever, I'm talking about just normal play. I think that if China survives long enough, there is a timing for, for HRE to do damage, but also HRE can go Imperial. And it's all about relic control and how much harassment HRE can do to Chinese. And the game kind of goes on from there. So I don't think this is favored to one side or the other. Um, I think it's quite quite okay for either side the next one we will be talking about is mongol um actually now i'm gonna go neutral here uh, mongol is if we're talk if we were talking about this last week i would say this is a good matchup for hre which is kind of funny because this was always unfavorable matchup but there's this new 
you know, build. It's, it's been out for like a month or two or three. But with two TCHRE, you age up extremely quickly. And you basically age up before the Mongol puts down the first tower. And you can just make an archer range and you just kill the guy making a tower. And that's it. The tower rush is done. Now, there is some interesting development with the Mongols, and that is that the Mongols have started trading. And I've recently done, up today actually, I've done a game where I played Mongols vs. HRE. And I didn't tower rush, I just went straight up for trade. And I won. So, I think in this matchup, either side can win. Uh, the tower rush is not very good against HRE. Because, like I said, you can just age up with 10 workers with HRE, and your, H your age up is going to be at like 330, 340. Which is when Mongol tower arrives. Next one is Delhi. This is one of the more unfavorable matchups uh, for HRE, you know. Um, just like it kind of struggles versus Malian, it's very, very good against Delhi. Uh, the reason for that is HRE can go like three or four barracks and just produce meta arms. Nothing else. Just mass meta arms and you just send them whatever sacred side, you just send them in Delhi base and you have a good time. Because you have Akin Chapel and you can make farms underneath it so you never run out of food. And Delhi has to move out on the map and eventually gets screwed over. Next matchup we're going to be talking about is Abbasid. I don't think this matchup is favored for either Civ. Um, Abbasid can go freely 2-3 TCs if they want to. And even if HRE rushes um, Castle, Abbasid can... You know, also harass them with horsemen or camel archers, and they can actually fight men at arms with horsemen and camel archers because they're going to have way bigger numbers. So I think this matchup can go uh, can go either way. So French bad matchup. I talked about it earlier, so I'm not going to go through it again. Um, I mean, I, I do think that Rus is very good uh, against HRE. It's Rus is good against HRE in a different way than French. So even though they're kind of the same, like I said, budget French. But what Rus can do is put pressure with knights and archers like French can. But then Rus can actually go castle extremely quickly. So sometimes you can delay HRE castle and then get your own castle first and take the relics. So you play it in a little bit of a different way. But I think it's still a, a pretty good matchup for Rus. And I think this is one of the worst win rates for HRE, maybe together with the Malians, I'm not sure, but yeah. Um, English, I'm going to put neutral. Uh, the reason I put neutral here is HRE can actually get their second TC up before English even arrives. The game is very favored for English in the super, super late game, but as HRE, you're supposed to win with just bigger economy. Like, you're supposed to completely overwhelm your opponent with units and even though english units are stronger uh, you're supposed to have better economy through like second tc or swabia or relics and you should you are supposed to just overwhelm your opponents completely and the last matchup we will be talking about is ottoman where do we put ottoman actually I think Ottoman is, is neutral as well. I don't think HRE counters it or has a massive favorable matchup. By the way, all these are considered on land maps. So not Mediterranean or something like that. I'm, I'm talking about open maps. So yeah, I think uh, I think it's pretty, pretty neutral. In general, I think, as you can see, HRE only has one good matchup where they're favored. Uh, they have three where they're kind of, you know, steering a little bit. But I would say that in general, you know, it, it doesn't make a sieve good or bad depending how many good or bad matchups you have. I guess if you have too many bad matchups, it's probably not great. But yeah, I think HRE is very, uh, very much based on how much you can grow in your economy and get the relics and, and kind of get the map control and then just overwhelm uh, your opponent. The next Civ we will be talking about is English. French added, I, I put in neutral, and HRE I put in neutral, right? You guys have to follow me right now. Last time I did this, this kind of uh, list where I had repeats, I put it in paint, but we can remember, copium. So, English. Uh, English is probably the best Civ right now together with China. But it still can have bad matchups. 
And it does have a bad matchup. And that bad matchup is Delhi. English is not good against Delhi. I often get questions on Twitch, how do you beat Delhi with English? That's a good question. Some micro, some block, some tenting from Delhi, and you got it. It feels like a very rough matchup because uh, Delhi can be on, on the map extremely quickly. They get the sacred sites, and you're basically like steering as an English player. You're trying to decap the sites, and then by the time we decap them, the Delhi is in castle, and then you're fucked. And that's kind of how this matchup goes. So it's a rough matchup for English. Obviously, in the late game, it's very English favored, but. This matchup doesn't go late game. It usually ends in Feudal or Castle. Uh, the next Civ we will be talking about is... Uh, I'm going to go with Rus. Um, I think Rus is pretty pretty neutral. I think either side can win. Rus, like I said, is like French. They can get their second TC up and they can work on trying to overwhelm the English in Castle. Similar to uh, every Civ that you play with. You should try to overwhelm English in Castle where they get to Imperial but yeah I think it's a skill matchup and uh, uh, both sides can can win for sure um, same goes for Abbasid I think it's you know same thing that I said about these other civs uh, usually this ends up in some kind of second TC from English or maybe some pressure into second TC and then Abbasid can go two three TC's and uh, yeah another bad matchup for English is Ottoman surprisingly um, I did not expect this when the Civ came out, when I played the Civ, but Ottoman makes a lot of sense. Uh, English has always had a weakness in Castle, where that's where they're kind of transitioning, they're making more, you know, units, they're getting their upgrades, and they usually use infantry. Now, the reason why Ottoman is so good against English is because they have free units, and not only can they can make more units in English, because English has lower production than other civs, I would say, in Castle, just because the way that the economy works. Ottoman has those extra military schools, four of them, and they can just spam knights and completely, completely overwhelm you, and they get free siege. Uh, and that's kind of... You can see both Delhi and Ottoman are known for just spamming units, a lot of units, and they're both pretty good against uh, English. The next one we will be talking about is uh, Mongol. I think this is a pretty good matchup for English. This was always a good matchup and I think that still continues. Uh, potentially on some maps English can, uh, Mongol can maybe get away with trade but a, lot, a big part about Mongol is tower rushing and if you can't tower rush English then you gotta play a normal game and then that kind of goes into where English is good in. So yeah, in general, I think this is a pretty, pretty decent matchup for, for English. The next one we will be talking about is China. So the two giants, China and English, I think it's a pretty even matchup, to be honest. They're favored against one another at different points in the game, and it depends a lot on the playstyle as well, the way you play the civs. But uh, yeah, I would say other side can win pretty clean, you know? Not like, oh, he won because he did this or he did that. And the last one we will be talking about is Malians. Which we're going to put in the neutral. So initially I thought Malians are, are a counter to English. Uh, but after playing more of this matchup, uh, longbows are actually... So javelin throwers counter range units, but longbows outrange javelin throwers. So if you have good mitre, you can outrange javelin throwers and you can get some good trades in um, and then also once you get to men at arms for English and a lot of longbows then the Malians will struggle even with poison arrow or Musafati warriors because they're just gonna die to longbows pretty badly in general you can see why English is a good sieve it has only two bad matchups and the problem with that is when I say problem the reason why English is doing so well is because these two civs are Ottoman is played a uh, decent amount, but Delhi is the lowest played civ in terms of numbers in any uh, rank. So if you take out the Delhi, they only have one counter, which is still new. A lot of people are maybe still adjusting to Ottoman, not knowing um, how to play or how to counter it. So yeah, 
Let's talk about the next one. Let's do Mongo. So Mongo versus French, I put neutral. A bad matchup right there. And HRE versus Mongo, I put neutral as well, I think, right? Uh, Mongo versus Ottoman. I think this is a good matchup for Mongo. Um, there's a lot of stuff you can do, beginning with Tower Rush. But there is also a way for Malians to defend this. So it's, it's an interesting way how this works. And I think the meta in this matchup is still developing to where I think either side can win, but I would probably put a slight edge over for uh, Mongols at this point. It might change in the future to like neutral, but I think Mongols are pretty good against Malians. And at least it forces Malians to make barracks in Dark Age, and then you can just kind of ignore Dark Age, get to feudal faster, and then you have uh, the advantage. The next Civ we will be talking about is Ottoman. I think Ottoman is also very good against Mongol. So Mongol relies usually on uh, a bit, two big things about Mongols. Tower rushing and then usually aging up to castle and getting the more expensive units to do the work for you. And Ottoman makes so many units that even if you have man at arms against feudal Ottoman, you will still lose the fight because Ottoman can have just absurd amount of units and you won't be able to out DPS the Ottoman army. Another thing is the tower rush that I mentioned. Ottoman can actually just make a barracks in Dark Age and defend your tower rush. So that kind of nullifies it completely. Uh, the next matchup we will be discussing is Delhi. I think this one's neutral. Uh, it used to be Mongol favored, but I think Delhi has ways to defend this and Delhi can also go Tower of Victory these days. And if Delhi gets going on the sacred sites, it's very rough for Mongol. Uh, but if Mongol can do enough damage to delay whatever Delhi is doing and I get Castle first, I think it's a pretty decent matchup for Mongo, but can go either way. Um, next matchup is Rus. Now, why is this a bad matchup? This is a funny one. This is a matchup you don't actually see a lot. Uh, this is a matchup you used to see a lot back in the day, and it always went terrible for Mongo. Um, the reason for this is, A, you can't tower rush Rus because they don't need gold early on. And B, Rus can go second TC very quickly, even after the changes. And once they go second TC, the Mongol can't really punish it. And even doing stuff like rushing castle with Mongol, like extremely, extremely quickly, uh, Rus can go mass knights, kind of like French, and then slowly tack up to castle to defend your man at arms or whatever. So if you're going man at arm Lancer as Mongol, Rus can go Spearman Knight and you know kill your knights with Spearman, kill the man at arms with knights. So I think in general this is a pretty bad matchup for Mongol. Um, not to mention Khan takes three shots to kill a, a deer, and Rus will usually get a very good bounty uh, on top of that, and force you know forcing Mongol to go for a scout as well. Uh, delays their economy and delays their castle further. The next one we'll be talking about is... Hmm, this is an interesting one. I think Abbasid, it used to be very favored for Abbasids, but I think with the recent changes where the TC takes longer to build and it takes costs more stone, I think this matchup has like balanced back a little bit because I thought I always thought that a lot of the top pros thought it, this matchup is Abbasid favored. Uh, but right now I think it's pretty even, but it depends a lot, just like a, with any save against Abbasid. You gotta put a lot of pressure on Abbasid in order for them to not just boom insane amounts. And the last sieve we will be discussing is Chinese, aka Zumbietus. And I think this matchup is also even. Um, I think China, it's a weird matchup, and this matchup depends a lot on the resource spawn. Because if you, if China has forward berries and puts their mill there and their sheep, and you tower that, they're gonna struggle quite a bit with the food. 
quite quite a bit also if their stone is forward you force them into this weird game where they're on one tc and you're rushing castle it goes all, all kinds of ways but if you manage to defend tower rush pretty well as chinese i think that matchup is good for you and then also mongol has a massive siege timing in castle because they can make siege on the field so you can potentially try and kill chinese opponent there all right next civ let's do let's do the delhi this is bad matchup i think i put this even mongol i put even and english i put good matchup damn i'm on point i'm on point so far i'm trying to remember these um all right so let's get into it delhi versus china this is a bad matchup for delhi this is a rough rough matchup china because it's such a strong sieve and because of the nest of bees your scholars get completely nullified so oh yeah delhi is good against french right yeah that's what i put okay thank you uh thank you that's why i have you guys so yeah uh a major strength with delhi is like castle dropping or keep dropping and then scholars but if china makes nest of bees it literally nullifies that completely. I've had games from both sides, Delhi and China, where the Delhi takes three sacred sites for free. China goes to TC Song Boom. And then China just comes out in Castle and just mows down Delhi. Because they have nest of bees. So even if you go stuff like Springles, China can just overwhelm you completely. So I think this is a pretty, pretty rough matchup. Um Delhi versus Malian. I think Delhi is very, very good uh, in this matchup. The reason for it is it can produce absurd amount of units. And if you manage to get sacred sites, even if Malian gets to castle, uh, I played this matchup recently from both sides. Even if Malian gets to castle, you can simply overwhelm them with amount of units that you have and uh, basically get the relics eventually for yourself. Because even if they edge up first to castle, you can age up a little bit later but have full map control so yeah um the next civ we will be talking about is ottoman i think this this is a pretty even matchup they're both very unit spam kind of you know go go civs and i think a lot of this comes down to super early micro and um and attacking so other civ can win now this is an interesting one abbasid Abbasid has been extremely favored for the longest time and recently I think I had like five or six losses in Delhi versus Abbasid and I was like what the fuck is happening or from from Abbasid side sorry and I was like what the fuck is happening like I was going 3 TC which is what I always did and I just kept losing so I was like I, I don't get it so then I played from Delhi side like three games, Delhi versus Abbasid, and I won all the games. And I'm like, that's so fucking weird. When did this happen kind of thing? And then Marine Lord messaged me on Discord literally the day after, and he was like, how the fuck do you beat Delhi with Abbasid? And I was like, I don't know. He's like, basically asking like, what happened? And I'm like, I don't know. It just, it just switched completely. So I'm guessing the major part of that is the TC change, but I didn't expect it would impacted that much but this is a very good matchup for delhi if you go tower of victory and just spam units you will not lose to abbasid it's a very very good matchup and the last one which is a rus i honestly don't know i haven't played rus versus delhi in a while i'm gonna put it in neutral because i think it's like it's like French, but French doesn't really have the option to go castle. But Rus can. So I think if you get like a boar near a sacred side and you make a TC or tower there, you get a little boar, you deny some sacred side. I think that can be decent for Rus. But like I said, I haven't played this matchup too, too much recently, so I'm not 100% sure on this one. You might wonder. Yeah, I can see in the chat people saying, so Delhi is OP. The problem with Delhi is... The favorable matchups are favorable, but the unfavorable ones are really unfavorable. Like, Delhi versus Atrium, Delhi versus China is really rough. I would say this, these two 
are a lot worse for Delhi than these these four are good for Delhi. Like these, were, I would say, are favorable. These are really unfavorable. So the problem with Delhi is like you either hit a jackpot or you get hit in the nuts. And then you have a couple of sieves that are neutral and that are very like tempo based, so it can go either way. And I think. I mean, I've been trying to tell people for a long time, Delhi, I think, is a really good sieve. It's just not a popular sieve for whatever reason. It's the least played sieve, but I think it's a very good sieve. Recently, I did a tier list, and I put Delhi in the A tier. Um, and I stick by it. Delhi versus Atreus, Despair, can confirm. Yeah. Atreus good against Delhi. Yes, it's very, very good against Delhi. All right, next sieve we will be doing is... Let's do... What did I... Okay, let's do Abbasid. Did I do Rus already? I don't think I did. Let's do uh, Abbasid. Uh, God, now I gotta remember. Guys, you gotta help me. I have no clue what I put where now. Abbasid versus English, I think I put even. Abbasid versus HRE, I put even. Abbasid versus Mongol, I put even. Abbasid versus French, I think I put a good matchup, or did I put even? Even as well. And then Delhi, that's a rough one. Um, so, Ab Acid. Um, I think Abbasid is good against Ottomans. Uh, the reason for that is... So, I think that Ottoman can beat Abbasid very easily. But if you play... Hmm. No, I'm going to have to put even ac neutral, actually. I think both sides can win, now that I think about it. I, I'm spending more time thinking about Ottoman and Malian since they're newer sieves. But I think both sides can win. But Abbasid has to play very, very defensively because Ottoman... You will usually have these weird mass archer fights, by the way. Where they go for Mechter and like free Sipahis and mass archers. And you go for mass archers, but you need some horsemen or spears to support that. But you want to play defensive as Abbasid and get your economy going. And you need to basically outboom their free units. Because usually Ottoman will go 1 TC. But I think it's a very aggressive matchup, but it can go uh, it can go either way. Next matchup that we'll be going through is uh, Rus. I think Abbasid, um, like you see, they're not very good or bad against any sieve and that's because they don't have any massive power spikes they're very linear you know you go second tc you go third tc and you just do what you're doing and you either defend the opponent's aggression or you succumb to it and lose villagers and i think Rus, like i said is budget french and it's gonna struggle more in rushing the abbasid so abbasid is gonna get the, their tcs for free the difference is, like I said, between Rus and French is Rus can rush castle, but in this matchup that doesn't do anything. Like, if you rush castle and get men-at-arms or the castle knights, Abbasid has camel archers, horsemen, and, and good spears that can deal with that. So, it doesn't really help you. Fun fact, Rus versus Abbasid used to be one of the most broken matchups a couple of months ago. It used to be extremely Rus favored, if you guys remember the, the boar build with four archer ranges all in. It used to be so so hard to stomp his Abbasid but the TC nerfs even though they did affect Abbasid they affected Rus way more because now you actually need to mine stone with Rus and because sheep don't give gold anymore you have to also get gold in order to be able to buy stone so it's a pretty pretty bad matchup uh, the next one we'll be talking about is China I think China is pretty even um, the reason for that is you can go extremely, extremely greedy as Abbasid and your workers are cheaper. So you can potentially put some pressure in feudal and then you can just go for a massive, massive siege push in castle because China will not be able to match your siege. And that's one China's weakness like against Mongol and against Abbasid. So I think both civs can win. And then in the late game, uh, China has like better hand canoeers and it has fire lancers but abbasid has culverins which are very very good so and it has camel archers so i think either 
either Civ can do pretty pretty well. Obviously, they're favored at, at different points. And then the last one is Abbasid versus Malians. Hmm. I am actually not sure about this one. I'm just straight up not sure. So I'm going to put neutral. But I have not played this matchup too much. I don't know if I've actually played this matchup three times. So in theory, Abbasid could be good because it can mass mass units in feudal against Malians. But also it can't get castle super fast, which you want to do against Malian so you can get men at arms and knights out. So I'm actually not sure about this matchup. I have a feeling it might be good matchup for Abbasid, but I am not sure. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna keep it here, alright? I guess Camel Rider I don't know, I'm just gonna keep it here, alright? Uh let's do we have Rus, China, Ottoman, and Malian left. Guys, this is where you gotta get your big brains in, all right? I should have saved it in, in paint. Rus versus Abbasid, that is a bad, bad matchup. Rus versus English is neutral. Rus is good versus Mongols, I remember that. Rus is good versus HRE, I remember that. French was bad. All right, let's do, uh, let's do the rest. I can't remember where I just put Delhi, even though I just did it. Delhi was neutral, okay. Thank you. I'm tired, all right. Uh, Rus versus Ottomans. I think this is a pretty good matchup for uh, Ottomans because Rus these days, like they don't really rush Castle anymore. They go for second TC. And I think any Civ that goes for second TC, Ottoman is pretty good against and they can just completely overwhelm them. It's like Ottoman versus French, but I feel like Rus is a bit worse. And even if Rus rushes Castle, I think Ottoman can still do uh, a lot of damage and put pressure on um, put pressure on the Rus China versus Rus uh, I also think that is a pretty bad matchup for uh, Rus one of the big reasons why this is a bad matchup for Rus is in Imperial you have to go Spaskaya Tower if you go if you want Stonewall uh, to be available to you and if you don't go Spaskaya Tower for the stone walls then fire lancers are gonna rip your ass apart like you're going to get completely completely uh, overwhelmed and that is a big problem especially playing against fire lancers now there are some another reason is you can't put any pressure on China like China is gonna go to TC Song Boom and you're not gonna be able to do anything against them um, you have a some kind of timing maybe in castle but that is a big if like i feel like even if you take a couple of relics uh like three four relics against china you're still gonna be uh in a lot of trouble and then the last one malians versus rus i would probably say that's also a bad matchup <laughs> if you played in feudal it's like french but worse and french gets countered by malians the reason why i'm thinking about rus versus Malians because no one plays Rus on land but then on the other hand potentially if you rush castle I think it's probably a bad matchup to be honest and uh yeah Rus right now guys not the greatest a Rus can mass more archers than French yeah that's even worse for Rus not, that's not better uh so yeah I think this is <laughs> This is kind of how it is for Rus. Like, I think it's just Rus is not great right now. And I've talked about this a lot uh, in Civ tier lists. I think they have the second lowest or the lowest win rate right now. Again, this doesn't mean you can't win the games. I know this looks awful. You can win games, but it's just like... I feel that Rus right now, everything you want to do, other Civs can do better. If you want to do cast or Feudal Push, French can do it better. If you want to do Castle Rush, Atrium Malian can do it better. Like, I feel like whatever they do, some other Civ can do it better. So, yeah. All right, we have three Civs remaining. We have China. China versus Delhi. I mentioned earlier, it's a very good matchup. China versus HRE. Uh, this is an even matchup. It can go either way. Uh, I personally think that China is a good matchup, or Malians are a good matchup for China, 
because Farimba has been a very popular choice for Chinese players. But with China, if you actually go even one TC Song castle or go two TC Song into castle with some walls and you get nest to bees, you're going to be all good against Malians. There is some potential for Malians, but I think if China plays well and holds for just a little bit, I think you're going to be more than fine. Because the way Malian work with Farimba is they put on pressure and they kind of snowball from then on out. And Nest of Beast kind of puts a hold to it completely. Um, we put Abbasid in neutral. We put... Um, I think I put Mongol in neutral as well. China is very good matchup uh, against French. And it's uh, neutral with English. Very good against Rus. And the last one is Abbas, the Ottoman, sorry. Uh, I think this is, uh, let me think, is this even neutral? I don't even think this is neutral. I think this is good matchup for China. Now, as you can see, uh, China is a pretty good sieve. Now, China does have very high win rate in high leagues. I don't think it actually has an even good win rate in lower leagues. But the problem, this is the real problem with China. Not that it's like beating these five sieves constantly. It's that it doesn't have a bad matchup right now. It's whatever you play against China is not countering it. It's not, you know, there, there is no weakness of China right now. Sieves that rush castle don't do too great against China. Sieves that... Russian Dark Age, China can go Barbican really fast and prevent that. Um, Sivs that fight in the ultra late game, China can do that too. So I feel like it just doesn't have any weakness, which is why top players consider it the best Siv. It doesn't have any disadvantages and you can just do really well against anything. As long as you play defensively early on and then just kind of swarm your opponents. So, very good Siv. Yeah, that's the thing. Rus, Rus used to have extremely strong Imperial with Streltsy and Springles that had, what was it, 13.5 range. But since those are both nerfed, so Rus... Yeah, he's still awake. Yeah, I know. Nine, eight and a half hours. I'm insane. I should definitely have uh, not done that. Um, bad matchup for Malians. It's Mongol and China and Delhi, in my opinion. Or did I put... I put Delhi in here, I think. English is neutral. Up Acid, we ended up putting neutral. And then HRE, amazing. And the last matchup, this is... The whole list is completed. The last matchup is Malians versus Ottomans. Out of pleasure of losing today on ladder in this matchup from Malian side. And, you know, we're still getting to, to learn Malians and Ottomans because, you know, I haven't played each matchup like 50 or 100 times. And I was Malian. I got to Feudal pretty quick. I got to Castle pretty quick. And Ottoman player was attacking me. And I was like, oh, it's fine. I have Castle. So then I went Javelin Throwers to beat the Archers and kind of Kite Sipahi. But the problem was I lost a Villager here and there. The units kept coming because they're cheap. They just, you know, Ottoman makes only archers and basically free produces Sipahi. The units kept coming, the units kept coming, and eventually the opponent hit castle, and then the knights started coming, and I was like, well, I guess I'm dead. Now, I'm gonna put this as a bad matchup, but I am not 100% sure. I am not convinced this is a bad matchup. I had only a few games worth of experience, so this might be a neutral one. Uh, might be but for now we're gonna put it into actually let's just put it in neutral fuck it it looks really nice three 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 i think it might be a bad matcher for malians just to share amount of units that ottomans can create uh but i do think it's leaning towards a bad matchup more info needed so there it is boys it is completed i get asked this very often is this sim good against this sim which sieve is this uh, sieve weak to? Which sieve is this sieve strong against? And now you have the answer. Obviously, this is my opinion. I think 
probably the top players would agree about 80 90 percent of these uh sometimes you know like the ottoman thing like maybe someone's gonna think it's bad matchup someone's gonna think it's neutral um don't think anyone's gonna think ottoman is a good matchup for malians so this is in general which civ counter which so if you're ever wondering how do i beat this stupid english now you know which civs are good against english so maybe start playing those civs but then when you start playing those civs like delhi then you realize atrium china bop it pretty hard there's always the the you know the the good and the bad side for each civ no matter what civ you play so like i said i've said this many times whenever you feel like one civ is overpowered and you can't beat it because your civ loses to it or is unfavorable against it there's two things you can do in order to improve that matchup number one look for pro games and look what the pros are doing in that matchup and managing to win and number two which is the most valuable one you can play that civ that you're losing against and see what problems they have and then you'll understand that civ a little bit more and you'll understand the weaknesses of that civ so what did we learn today china and then rus right here hopefully the rus gets buffs anyway if you're watching this on youtube let me know what you think i want to thank you guys so much for watching let me make this all nice and pretty for you guys look at this this is a professional stream this is a professional stream right there thank you guys so much for watching i uh, really do appreciate it if you enjoy the video i never say this make sure to like and subscribe let's get to trillion likes i never ask for likes or subs on youtube i should start doing that it reminds people to like and sub twitch gamers that you're watching live i've been streaming almost nine hours it's 2 30 a.m and it's time for me to go bed as well thank you everyone have a good night and i will see you guys tomorrow both on twitch and youtube peace